So uh, I may be a conspiracy theorist now, boys. Mm, what way? Well, I've been editing a lot of our videos, our backlog of videos, and I'm noticing a trend. <laughs> and that trend is all the movies that like we collectively don't like, but I like absolutely viscerally shit on. Yeah. Have such insanely positive reviews. There's just no shot that these companies aren't using like production budgets to pay for good reviews. I, <laughs> oh, 100%. Like, I noticed it tonight and I started laughing because, like I said, I've been, I, I, I've, I've been editing a lot of the videos. I've, we have a big backlog. Folks, youtube.com slash harsh language podcast. Check out all our videos. But I'm fucking editing these down and, and I've done the last couple. I've done Infinity Pool and Saltburn and tonight I'm working on the Scream one. And just, they're all, like, every video we're talking about, like, I can't believe how good the reviews are of this. Like, what are people talking about? Um, It's crazy. I There's just, you could not convince me that Rotten Tomatoes is being paid off. Like, you couldn't convince me otherwise. It just has to be. And, unfor so. and unfortunately, I think we're in another situation today with what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about Last Stop in Yuma County a little bit later. A movie I didn't even know fucking existed until Dusty mentioned mm. it like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, this yeah. movie's getting fucking stark crazy reviews on 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 uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm just sort of wondering why. Obviously, we'll get into it, but goddamn, like, put me. I'm gonna fucking start going on QAnon and shit. Like, <laughs> this shit is crazy. What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Uh, welcome back, folks. This is episode 91. Mm -hmm. Getting close. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Looking terrible. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know you're having a rough day. Fuck AT&T and AT&T support. It's yep. fair. That's fair. AT&T sucks, usually. I used to work for AT&T mm. way back when. So funny. Not too. even a customer. I'm trying to leave their fucking network. Just give me the <laughs> goddamn code. Let yeah. me fucking leave. Give the man his code, AT and T. If you're listening to this, which you're not, Jesus. but give the man his fucking code. Free him. <laughs> yep. I just hey. sent a Dan style tweet to their customer support Twitter. Oh Good. yeah. Actually, you know what? Honestly, that works a lot of the time. If yeah, you it works better, I think. But if you like at a support of something that you're pissed at, like they usually respond. But yeah. um, we'll see. They hate I got to try again tomorrow because uh, after four hours of on the phone today, I got nothing resolved. Yeah. They hate negative publicity. So mm -hmm. they'll yeah. do anything. Have you been seeing the yeah. trend people have been doing at uh, Chipotle? No. Oh, taking people the videos? Are, yeah. Uh, yeah. People yeah. are recording the people make their bowls so that they don't get, or burritos or whatever, so that they don't get skimped. Yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's actually, hilarious. That's actually mm -hmm. fucking funny. <laughs> and it's working. Oh man. Well, some of those are faked. Like you know, the amount of meat they put on is like Oh yeah, for sure. They they ask for double off and it's clipped it out. Yeah. What have you guys been up to? I've been gaming. Oh yeah, I've been playing, playing um Diablo. I've been playing Killer Clowns. Oh. A little bit of Diablo. Um Killer Clowns is good. Yeah, yeah. And I've that. been playing um Multiverses. That's probably mm. the most fun I've been having. That's cool. Yeah, they added Jason Voorhees. Killer Clowns is good, though? Yeah, it's fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. I heard the new season of Diablo is good. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. That's cool. What have you been up to, Dusty? Uh, not a whole lot. I was playing some Death Stranding with my oh. roommate. I had never played it. and It's a great game. Yeah. It's fun for a little while, but it gets a little old. It's uh, <laughs> repetitive. Carrying the baby around. What else are you doing that yeah. fucking game? It is repetitive, but it's repetitive mm -hmm. in like <laughs> a brilliant way, I think. But yeah, it's, it's definitely also, not a game for everybody. That's all, yeah. uh, you know for sure. But um, but yeah, I really like that movie. Um, that game. 
Uh, <laughs> he is making a movie with Jordan mm -hmm. Peele, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, no, Jordan Peele's helping him make a game. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. One oh, no. of those. You might be right. I don't know. It's one of those. I love Kojima. I'm a Kojima. I mean, there's my tattoo of fucking Fox from yeah. Metal Gear. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Kojima stan, if you will. So I'm a little biased. Um, you guys are a storyteller, but I oh, think yeah. one of the reasons where Metal Gear Solid like thrived is like they had some of that Konami gaming. Uh, I see a difference between some of the Metal Gear and what he did with Death Stranding. Like, nah, there's a there's a direct evolution from Metal Gear Solid Five to Death Stranding. Like, Death Stranding is the culmination of what he wanted to do in MGS Five, like hundred percent. Konami, there there was like a lot of interference with Konami and him. Obviously, Metal Gear Solid Five marked the end of him working with Konami. But sure. like, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about the gameplay of all of them, like three, four, five. Yeah, what do you mean though? I'm uh, confused. Just, uh, I don't know, just the uh, Death Stranding wasn't what I thought of, like, I don't know, the terrain, the vehicles, uh, the fighting, like, I didn't just, What's I don't the thing? see the game it as is... an evolution. Well... I see it as a step back in some ways. And storytelling, it's mm -hmm. just as good, if not better, but in gameplay, it lacks, lacks quite a bit as far as compared to some of the Metal Gear games. Mm. Eh. In my opinion. I don't know, I... To me, it was exactly. I'll never like, go back and play that game, and I'll go back and play Metal Gear games. Did you play fun. MGS Five? Uh, no, I've only played the first chapter, but I was going to play that with my roommate. That's what we're going to try next. Because mechanically, it's exactly the same. Like uh, it's a hundred percent the same. There's the physics in Death Stranding are way better because you're carrying the shit and balancing and stuff. But that game is not really about that. It's like about the experience, which I know sounds like, ugh, but it, it just is. Like. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause in Metal Gear Solid Five, there was like a mechanic that was like a community thing about like disarmament, and it was like meant to engage like the entire player base of Metal Gear to like work together for a common goal, and Death Stranding is like the next level of that. And so like the gameplay elements aren't really about like shooting and fighting and stuff. It's like yeah, that's part of it, but it's really more about like driving up a hill while it's raining and there's BTS and you're just sliding one way or yeah. the other the whole time. That's but th that's the thing though. Infuriating and ridiculous. It's but it's supposed to be because that's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because somebody else no, who took that right. path should have had the fucking. Uh, the goal was for, for people to work together. So it's like, I want to build a bridge. And it's like, well, why am I going to build a bridge here? I could just go a different way. Well, I'm building it for others to come down this port at another... Yeah, but there's some know. places where there's so many bumps and rocks and on a hill when it's way, like, you literally can't do anything. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's that's the whole point. But, you know, I get it. It's definitely mm -hmm. not for everybody. Um, have you guys been watching anything other than game or just gaming? Nah, I've just been uh... gaming. I don't know. Have I watched any movies lately? I don't think so. I still have not um, started the shows, and they're just piling up. They're just piling up. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mayor of Kingstown came out. I watched the first episode of that. I saw oh, that. I didn't watch it, but I saw that it came out. Was it good? Uh, yeah, it was. I think I'm going to let it build up. Nice. But, yeah, it was, it was nice. good. Maybe I'll do that, too. I saw there's a new show on Apple dropping soon. I... Don't remember the name of it, but it looked pretty good. I added it to my list, like a mini series. Hmm. Ah, new okay. show on Apple. What we got? I wish I remember the name of it. Let me I'm check. Try to look it up. Let me check my tracked list because I Dark definitely. Dark Matter. Play. No. That's twenty twenty. I've been meaning to watch Boy Kills World, but haven't got to it yet. And Tarot's out in HD. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Hang on, hang on. I put it on a list. I started the first omen the other night, but I fell asleep because it was late. I need uh, to go back and finish that. Yeah, we should add that to the list sooner rather than later. We might have to amend this month's uh, this month's um, schedule for what we're planning yeah. on watching. Because I really wanted to add, watch that. Uh, Glenn Powell's new rom com Hitman. To the oh list. yeah, for sure. I'm a big, <laughs> a, as you know, big big Glenn Powell guy. Like a seven point four on IMDb right now, or yeah, well it's it's under the bridge theaters, is the show. Is that wait no? Uh, is that it? No, that's not it. I don't know what it is. Never mind. Forget it. Forget <laughs> I said anything. Um, great. yeah, I haven't watched anything, but I did. I don't know. You guys know I'm the conductor of the long legs hype train, 
And that's mm-hmm. coming out here soon. People are starting to, some little reviews are starting to drop of people who have seen the movie. And I pulled something off of Twitter because, oh, man, it got me excited. I want to read it to you guys. It's as if Long Legs was forged in hell by Satan, who brought it as an artifact into our world as a gift. <laughs> Osgood <laughs> Perkins' film is the real fucking shit. Mischievous, steadied tension build, scary and sick as fuck. Micah Monroe is terrific. Nicholas Cage is in pure weirdo mode. Now, I just got finished saying reviewers are fucking full of shit, and I'm noticing the trend, so take this for what you will, but it just is adding to the hype that I have for that fucking movie. Oh, yeah. man, I'm so excited. It looks Hope so good. good. Did you watch the trailers for it, Marvin? Probably not. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. did? Ooh, yeah. okay. I watched the one. Not, yeah. I don't know if there's multiple. I didn't watch multiple. But. Yeah, no, no, just the one's fine. You don't have to keep watching because you don't want, you know, it's fucking, yeah. you'll see the whole fucking movie by the time you're done. Yeah. Um, speaking of trailers, Dusty was excited to send us the uh, Venom 3 trailer today. I didn't even watch it. I don't care. I didn't watch it. But <laughs> Did you watch it, Dusty? I did, yeah. Looks like it's going to be a fun finale. Fun Venom movie, huh? I believe it. Yeah, I like the Venom movies. I don't give a fuck. That's fine. You're hey, you're. I don't give a fuck. You're entitled, Marvin. I'm not a snob. Okay. I'm not a snob either. I just think they're not good movies. That's fine. <laughs> Leave me alone. Even if I, I was a snob, fucking I didn't, I didn't what say you were it? a snob. I you are getting <laughs> defensive because <laughs> I know I'm a snob. <laughs> um, just a little elitism in there. A little bit, but right. <laughs> it is what it is. I know, I think I saw that there's like little Peter Parker in the trailer. Mm. A little glimpse of Pete. And no, I don't know, I didn't pay that close attention. I was on hold with AT&T still. Right, yeah. <laughs> was that show on Apple TV called it Presumed Innocent by Chance? No. That's Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, yes, yep, there it is. Yeah, Presumed Innocent. Yeah, yeah, good job, Marvin. June 12th. Yeah, 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 looks good. A horrific murder upends the Chicago prosecuting attorney's office when one of its own is suspected of the crime, leaving the accused fighting to keep his family together. Apple loves their crime dramas. And I love them, too, because they're good. They are good. Yeah, they are. Under the Bridge is a Hulu show that I'm excited to watch. That's the one I thought I was talking about. Hulu, yeah, I saw that. Yep. That looks pretty good. Is that a foreign show? Um, I don't think so. And then there's the other show on uh, the one um, with, uh, what's his name? Colin Farrell. Um, mm, yeah, Sugar. Sugar, yeah, that looked really good, too. Um, well, yeah, so I guess dry week for everybody, huh? Yeah. In terms of watching really stuff. Watch yeah. I, I, I fixed, I fixed, I completely uprooted and changed my sleep schedule. I think I was telling you guys about it last week. But oh, really? Yeah, I've been going to bed at like midnight. All week, which is very new for me. Yeah. But I got to say, I'm kind of enjoying it. Nice. nice. Yeah. Um, but it does, it has been getting in the way of me watching things. I have to start really buckling down. But once I get in the groove of watching shit, it's, it should be fine. But, um, yeah. I'm the but same yeah. way. Uh, what do you got this week in terms of news, Dusty? Anything big going on? I have something I would like to share before you get started. Okay. I don't know if you had it on your thing. Marvin sent it earlier, but I had pulled it like a couple days ago because I was like, my man. I don't yeah. know. You guys hopefully you remember. Guys usually, when you guys post stuff in Discord, or whatever, I've already got it. Yeah. Nine yeah, times yeah. out of ten. You're yeah. a muckraker. I know. But <laughs> I complained several times on, on the show on our show, on this podcast, this very podcast, that Netflix is fucking stupid for not releasing physical media. And finally, one of the bigger names on Netflix spoke out about it. My boy Mike Flanagan slams Netflix for not releasing physical media. Quote, in the years I worked at Netflix, I tried very hard to get them to release my work on Blu-ray and DVD. They refused at every turn. It became clear very fast that their only priority was subs and that they were actively hostile to the idea of physical media. 
This is a very dangerous point of view. While companies like Netflix pride themselves on being disruptors and have proven that they can affect great change in the industry, they sometimes fail to see the difference between dis disruption and damage so mm. much that they could find themselves intentionally or not doing enormous harm to the very concept of film preservation. Boom. What do you guys think of that? It's kind of crazy. Netflix came from DVDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Physical and then they media. went digital, and, now, and they released they released a couple things like Stranger Things one and two got physical medium releases, so they've done it in the past. Did Stranger Things get physical releases? Yes, yes, one and two did absolutely. Really? Okay, yeah, uh, Haunting of Hill House got one. What else? Uh, I don't think the Haunting of Crown. Hill House did. Did it? Yeah. Huh. Well, that's interesting. I'm not a big physical media guy anymore just because like I just have like a thing with clutter. I don't know. They just like I had I told you guys this. I've had I, I had like a collection of like over 300 Blu-rays and DVDs and they yeah. really just collected dust. So like, I don't know. I get like the collector thing and I get like physical media and I get like all of it. I was just talking to my friend about this recently because he was like. He just he messaged me canceled HBO and like all this stuff. He got a he got an email from HBO that was like, "Hey, by the way, we're raising your monthly price to like fifty bucks a month, and you're <laughs> actually gonna get downgraded in, th in terms of like the quality of service you're paying for." Yeah. And he's like, you know, I, I was trying to tell him, I was like, "Oh, you should do what I do, you know, what we do, Marvin." And uh, <laughs> he was he was he's kind of like resistant to it just because he's like kind of stuck in his ways, but he also has like a moral thing where he's like oh physical media and i'm just like okay well i don't know yeah there's I, something to be said about it i mean there is for sure but like eh. for people that don't have high speed internet which is still totally 100 percent americans and uh yeah. just for posterity like i totally. mean let's say china nukes disney and invades <laughs> florida like what the everything in the vault is gone so unless you own it it's gone gone listen china's not doing anything other than curing diseases so you don't have to worry about that did you gotcha. see the did you see the uh the headline today? China scientists from China found a cure for diabetes. Oh, oh really? Like yeah. actually? Yeah, and they're testing the in their testing of this uh it's a stem cell uh treatment, so wow. QAnon mm -hmm. people are going to love that, but uh it's a stem cell treatment that after 11 weeks uh all the, I don't know if it's all, but the majority of the people under the trial were free and clear of, of diabetes. They no longer needed true. insulin. Yeah. That's um, awesome. I hope yeah, the trials sick. go well and it well, turns out that it works well. It's probably just going to speed up the war between the United States and China because U.S.-based... Big pharma. Yeah, U.S.-based pharmaceutical companies are not going to be happy, especially with diabetes the yeah. since the price of insulin just goes up and 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 up, despite the creator of insulin selling the patent for it for only a dollar because he thought that it was such a valuable asset to humanity. But, you know, capitalism, baby. Capitalism yep. breeds innovation. But <laughs> them communists are curing diseases. Well, that's not capitalism. What is it? Uh, selling the intellectual property, sell, holding the patent so nobody else can make or sell the product because you have the patent. And I mean, I get it's capitalism selling it, but the idea of patent <laughs> itself is... I got I mean, fired up. <laughs> no, capitalism is raising the prices in to a level no, that it's is just... free, free, free trade between two parties. Mm -hmm. How come every other government uh, regulates the prices of medications? Because uh, our pharmaceutical companies allow it. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> the government allows it. But um, but yeah, anyhow. Okay. So that was cool. But anyway, well, back to the entertainment news. What you got yeah, for us? Yeah, back to the entertainment Well, we were talking about right. physical media. Yeah, I don't know. I just, this shit just collects dust. And and I don't know. I Like, I there is definitely something to be said for owning physical media. I used to be a big collector. I used to collect movies. I used to collect CDs, like music CDs. Yeah, and the, I mean, there's nothing like hard drives as well. Like, if you've got a little NAS at home and you've got, you know, a couple hundred thousand movies on there, then good for you. That's still physical medium. Yeah, I just can't well, it's like getting less and less physical now because hard drives are SSDs, solid states. I'm big on convenience and simplicity. Like the fact that I could just house all my fucking music on my phone is like, 
uh, you just, I don't know. For me personally, like you can't. But really are you housing that. it on your phone or is it all in the cloud? Well, it's in the cloud, but I can have right. it on my phone if I wanted to. I just don't yeah. like to take I download the storage all my space. Music. Do you? So when the internet goes out, yeah. all you have that's cached, oh, that's all you have. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, I'm not a doomsday prepper, so I don't think that far ahead. <laughs> I just like convenience. Plus, like, if that's happening, if there's some sort of, like, global catastrophe where, like, there's no internet, like, I have other things to worry about than fucking listening to, like, misfits and shit, <laughs> yeah. I got an old hard drive from, like, the 2000s with, like, the Billboard Top 100s from, like, 1950 to 2010. <laughs> yeah. And a Sorry. couple hundred thousand other albums. Nice. <clears throat> Anywho. Um, news. Uh, Furiosa continues to struggle in the theater. It uh, made it to 100 million globally, I think, this weekend, Damn. off a 168 million dollar budget. So, not wow. doing too good. But uh, who knows if they'll make a sequel? But one thing we did get out of it, uh, Hideo Kojima watched it, and he said that actor Tom Burke would be the perfect live action Solid Snake. I think what he said is you could only see him playing the part. Wow. Did you see that, Dan? I did. I actually had a little bit of a, a nerd moment because uh, one of the Twitter accounts that I follow, I don't know if it was discussing film or if it was a different one. I think it was discussing film. I don't remember which one it was. But um, they posted that headline, but they did a side-by-side -side of the actor, but it was with Big Boss, not Solid mm. Snake. And I was like, as a diehard Metal Gear fan, I was like, these motherfuckers, that's Big Boss. And then, like, I saw they ended up taking it down. So I guess people complained, but then they fixed it. They put it back side by side with actual Solid Snake. It's very funny. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, we don't know if this movie's going to go anywhere. There was a Metal Gear Solid movie. I think it was announced in 2020, or that's when Oscar Isaac was attached to yeah. play the role. Uh, we mm -hmm. haven't really heard anything since. So mm -hmm. still in development hell. But, uh, yeah. There's a, um, um, that sucks about Furiosa, but I mean, if other people are like, I want to see it, but I'm not like, oh, I got to go see this. So a lot of people are probably just fine waiting. Well, this just continues to add to all the what's happening to movie theaters conversation that goes on. Um, being in like in, embroiled in like, quote unquote film Twitter is like the most fucking heinous fucking thing I've ever done in my life. Like I <laughs> can't fucking stand seeing the opinions of some of these people. Um, and I'm only in it because like, I just, you know, you interact with one tweet and all of a sudden your fucking whole oh, yeah. feed is that thing. But yep. everybody's like, it's so funny how social media algorithms, like they just, they only give you the extreme. It's like one extreme or the other. And it's like, so everything I'm reading is either like movie theaters are dead. Like what's happening? This is just another <laughs> fucking movie that's failing. And then everybody else is like, guys, it's not that big of a deal. This is like, they're not dead. There's movies that are making billions, a billion, there's billion dollar movies out there. We had them last year mm -hmm. and this year. No, People this are year acting yet. like Furiosa was going to just like, fucking movie theaters are going to explode with people. Like it's, it's a sequel to a movie that wasn't even really that popular to begin with. Right, yeah. still like, yeah. And Mad hey. Max itself is a fucking old franchise. It's like not that yeah. popular of yeah, a thing. It's from the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a very niche <laughs> fan base that Mad Max has, okay? Yeah, and then yeah. they made Fury Road, which again wasn't that I'm not gonna say well received. It was a good movie. People loved it, but it didn't like blow out the fucking movie theater walls. So it's right. like, how could you expect this would? So but also, on the other hand of the argument, like, yeah, I mean, people, there, there is something where people are not being drawn to theaters for uh, everything, you know what I mean? It's yep. only few and far between. What that is, I don't know. Probably the fact that movie tickets are like fucking $40, right? Yeah. Yeah. Movie passes are pretty mm -hmm. good right now, though. Like, if you got a movie pass, it's, uh, you're saving a lot of money. Yeah. Obviously, you have to make time to go. Like the, you have to go like four times or something. Those Maybe are generally only three times a month, but like those are generally good if you go to the movies all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm saying that you don't even have to go all the time. Like it's like three or four times. But how much is the month. pass? 
It depends. Um, I think it, if you buy like a, if you buy the pass uh, for a family, if you go twice, it pays for itself. That's fine. Right. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. It's something like that. If you go two or three times, it pays for itself in a exactly. month. That's yeah. not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's at least twice, but it might be three times. I'd have to check. But yeah. Anywho. We'll see. We're going to um, see with Deadpool. Deadpool's going to be the big test, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because Deadpool. The first two Deadpool. So. <laughs> Deadpool's a, we'll see this <laughs> Deadpool is not only an MCU movie, okay, but it's also a comic book movie that wasn't in the MCU that drew huge audiences and was very popular. So it's it should have everything going for it. If this movie doesn't fucking blow out the box office, then like something is going on. Yeah, I was uh, I was wrong about Dune Part Two. I thought it was going to be the first billion dollar movie of the year, but it's still uh, lingering around seven hundred and eleven million. Mm. I would assume Deadpool will be that, but we'll see. Yeah, that would imagine. We'll what else All you right. got? Um, Arcane. We got a new poster and oh, a yeah. time frame. Not an actual date, but a November release. Yep. So we know when it's when it's probably going to come out. Did you did you watch that, Dan? I did not know. Yeah, Man, that's a great show. You're missing out. It's the League of Legends thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it was pretty good. I just uh, maybe we'll see. Yeah, it was great. You excited, Marvin? Yeah, super excited. Yeah. I loved the first yeah. Uh, season. Yeah, it was great. Won some Big awards, thing. I think. Nice. Speaking of awards, the bear. Hmm. Drama or comedy? Have you guys watched this show at all? I want to. I haven't yet. Okay. I haven't watched it yet. Well, there's a lot of controversy over this show. Uh, some people are pushing for the um, Academy to reclassify it as a drama because they think it's a little too serious, even though like, definitely not as serious as something like su Succession, and it does have a lot of dark humor. This would be like trying to say Barry should be a drama instead of a comedy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Some of those things get kind of weird, I but guess. It, it's weird. And what's even weirder is like in 2015, the Television Academy automatically placed any show that clocked under 30 minutes in the comedy category. It didn't matter. Hmm. It was 30 minutes or less. It was a comedy. Well, that's and longer than it was drama. But in bizarre. 2021, they changed it uh, and they no longer considered running times, but they're still trying to figure out how to categorize some of these shows that are both dramatic and funny and could be in both uh, because the bear is set to break some records. It was the highest number of nominations for its first year and it could pass 30 rock with the most nominations all time at 22. Hmm. I could definitely see how Barry would be a drama to be honest. Yeah. But, but it, it's also a comedy, right? It is. Yeah, yeah it is. It yeah. is for sure. Just like, I mean, I just think we're in a world where, we're watching more dark comedy than what was available back then because there wasn't a whole lot of better call dark Saul comedy was, like, for sure. Yeah, but that's even not that old. Like that's I'm true. talking. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Yeah, I mean, that's still in the last twenty years. But I'm mean, like, wait, you, what? What they're complaining about is when you go back far enough, and it was just, um, you know live studio audience shows where there's a laugh track or a yeah. laugh light. Right. You know, the the Seinfelds and the 30 Rocks and all those other shows where it's just, so I don't know. But okay. Yeah. That's, That's weird. So, that they wanna make, so they want to make the bear a comedy, basically, is what you're saying. There's some people who probably or don't want to see comedy. this. They want their comedy to get some, they think they're getting, like, people yeah, are yeah, complaining yeah, yeah. that it's just too popular. And because popular, maybe it'll do better over there in the drama section. I but, see. Yeah. I see. Hmm. I Interesting. Know. Hollywood infighting, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, our boy Jeff Snyder from The Inn Schneider uh, reported that Jordan Pill allegedly had a meeting with Marvel Studios to discuss one of their upcoming projects. Oh, God. What could that be? Who knows? Hmm. It was just a conversation, so that's probably five years from now, so it doesn't <laughs> even really matter. But He doesn't strike he me as a good fit for Marvel, to be honest. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe when they get into that, uh, underworld stuff, you could probably do something. 
Not that he's a bad filmmaker. He's a great filmmaker, obviously. I just don't know if he's a good fit for Marvel because we've seen that before with the Eternals. You know, they went and got fucking, what's her name? Uh, uh, Chloe Zhao, who was like a fucking Artur filmmaker who made Nomadland. Like, she got nominated for that movie in 2020. But I guess, I don't know. I guess they had gotten her before, well, like before that because... Eternals was 2021, so that was probably like well under underway. Point being, she was not a good fit for a Marvel movie. She made a mar. She made a, a great like. I think the Eternals. I, I wouldn't say it's great. I think it's okay. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. But it was very different in the Marvel. Yeah, I need to go rewatch that in the MCU. It's like it's very different. Uh, I, I don't think it is. It's just different. It's a different type of movie. I don't know. Maybe he'll be good. Who knows? He's he's a, he's like a fucking nerd, so he might make a good comic book movie. True. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of comic book movies, well, yeah, I guess kind of not really. Fetty Alvarez was talking to Empire about Alien Romulus. Um, they were asking him about what kind of movie he was going to make, mm-hmm. and they were talking about the difference between Alien and Aliens. Uh, I saw and this. And this was his response. To ask an a- alien fan to choose between them is a perverse question. It is. So I thought, how about do both? Yeah. Take the best of both worlds. So hopefully that's good news for the movie goers and alien fans. But uh, Speaking we'll of Fede Alvarez, his Evil Dead film, the remake he did, is now on HBO, I believe. So hmm. if anybody's out there that hasn't seen it, check it out. It's not bad. As far as remakes go. Have you seen it, Dusty? I don't think so. What is this? Uh, The Evil Dead remake that came out a bunch of years ago. It's not bad. That's the one with the... Yeah, no, I haven't. No, that was... uh, Was that Jim Elephant? Was he in it? Not Rise, right? This is... No, no, no. This came out in 2019. No, no, no. It was a remake of Evil Dead. Uh, Uh, Not 2013. A couple big name actors in it. I remember it. 2013. Yeah. No, there's no, no there's there's nobody in it that's like big. It's like a bunch of like no name people or that oh. I know of, yeah. Okay. Um uh, It was good. It was different. It's not like it's a very different feel than Yeah. It's like it's like Evil Dead Rise but a remake of the first one. Is if this is the best way that I could describe it like it's not as campy as the original Evil Dead. I'm not sure what you're thinking of, though, Dusty. Uh, Timothy Oliphant. I don't know what you could even be thinking yeah, of. Yeah, I don't know. There was some remake that we were talking about. Uh, probably a different movie that was remade. Yeah. Um, maybe it was The Omen? Maybe. With, I don't remember. Anywho. Back to Aliens. Um, Deadline reports that L. Fanning, I think it's L. It's E-L-L-E. Maybe it's Ellie. It's L. Fanning. Del. Is in talks to star in Dan Trachtenberg's next Predator movie. Saw that as well. Currently titled yeah. Badlands. Yeah. This is not a true sequel to the Prey movie. However, uh, they also reported that additional projects as far as spinoffs are in the works and a direct sequel to Prey is also being discussed at this time. Uh, so this is going to be a different time. Different story, different interaction, but uh, apparently it takes yeah, place sometime in the future. That's what I would imagine. Yeah, like a dystopian future, Mad yeah. Maxian style. So, <sighs> Somebody, see. we need to pump um, the brakes on all these fucking just sequels and shit. Like, well, how about a crossover, Dan? <laughs> sure. What do we got? Chris Hemsworth <laughs> is in talks to join the Transformers GI Joe crossover, according I'm to Deadline. That, Paramount yeah. officially. Uh, the movie was coming out. They officially announced that the movie was coming out in April, so this is just new news to it. Uh, big names attached, though. Lorenzo Di uh, Bonaventura, uh, Mark uh, Ver- Veradian, Michael Bay, Tom DeSanto, and Don Murphy are producing the movie, while Steven Spielberg and Hasbro Entertainment serve as executive producers. What's so crazy is that unless They're going to pump a lot of money into this. They're going to hope it's going to be a half-a-million-dollar movie, and they'll probably spend 150 200 on it. Unless I'm mistaken, we haven't gotten a G.I. Joe film recently. I think the last one no. was Rise of the Cobra, which was... Rise of Cobra, yeah. With Channing Tatum, which was, like, horrendous. 
I don't think I actually watched it. I just watched the G.I. Joe movie and not the Rise of Cobra. But that's a that, franchise. Wasn't that a straight to Netflix movie? I have no clue. But that's a franchise that could maybe like use a revival, right? Like we haven't gotten a good version of that. I said a couple shows back, like, why are we making remakes of good things? Let's just make things that were bad and make them better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have maybe you ever watched G.I. Like Joe, Marvin? You a G.I. Joe guy, Marvin? Um, I know of G.I. Joe. Um, maybe played with a couple of the toys, but mm. never watched it, I don't think. The action hero version, I mean, the action figure version of American exceptionalism is basically what these, <laughs> these are, but I don't remember the, I do remember the cartoons from a kid, but I don't remember them, mm -hmm. remember them you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I got a G.I. Joe shirt. So it's yeah? like 50% knowledge, 50% violence. Nice. Because knowing is half the battle. That's right. <laughs> All right, what else you got for us? Um, all right, uh, Glenn Powell. I know we're all big fans here. Uh, <laughs> this is an interesting one, though. Uh, this is a movie that's been in development hell since 2016. Um, WB's Captain Planet. I guess he was talking with Collider <laughs> about this. Uh, they were asking him about it, and he says, God, I freaking hope so. Trust me. We've been working hard on that one for a long time. I'm optimistic about his future, but you never know the timeline. Uh, DiCaprio's production company is attached to this one. And in another interview with, I think, GQ, uh, oh, anywho, uh, so back to that before I go into that. This will be an interesting one because this is Captain Planet, and, you know, DiCaprio's a big planet guy, save the planet. So uh, I think they're excited to make this one, send us all a big message that we're going to kill the planet, and Captain Planet's going to save us. I'm surprised it's going to be Glenn Powell. I'm surprised they haven't made a Captain Planet Crazy. movie already. I know. Are you familiar this with Captain Planet, This is a good show. It ran for, like, what, two seasons yeah. or something like that? I they, fucking in the 90s. They should have just got Don Cheeto again to be <laughs> Captain Planet. Dude. Not fucking Glenn Powell. That show was so fucking good. Oh, God. I loved that show. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun one. Captain Planet. He's a hero. Oh, my God. That shit was a banger. That's right. Yeah. But when our powers But in mind. another interview with GQ, uh, he was talking about playing other superheroes and if he'd ever really consider because this was, you know, Captain Planet, obviously. Um, he said no. Batman's the only one he would ever consider, you know, because he he's a guy with wishes. no powers. And he, he, he was always wishes. been a Batman guy. <laughs> yeah. I do not want to. We've see got him a pretty long seven. list of people that want to play Batman, and I don't think he's anywhere close to the list. So yeah, I'm not worried he's... about it. But just something he said, you know, everybody wants to play Batman. You want to talk about Nick that for Cage a second? To play Superman. Because I was thinking about this. There's not a single actor that I could think of that I would want to see be Batman. I'm gonna be honest. I think Carl Urban could do it. Nah, he's getting up there though. I don't know. He's too, he's too yeah. rugged. I, I like, <laughs> yeah. I, I like the idea of what what's I think his is name? like the old, big, burly bat, like car Batman in the cartoons. I don't like, like that Batman. big body. You know, I love. I don't, I don't like that. We got that already with Ben Affleck. It was whack. I don't like that big yeah, ass. Well, Dark Knight. That, but there was Ben Affleck. He's no, he's not. I didn't think he was Batman. terrible. But he's a better Bruce than a bat than a Batman. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I can't really think of anybody that I would like to see because like names are getting thrown around. Obviously, I don't think Glenn Powell would be a good Batman. I don't think fucking <laughs> the dude from Reacher would be a good Batman, to be honest. I don't like them. The fucking yeah. big ass dude? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he I said he wanted know. to do it. He's, he was, he's been being thrown around. I hate fucking, uh, what's his name? The last Batman we got. Fucking can't stand him. Bobby about, Pattinson. Uh, Robert Pattinson, yeah. Oh, I liked him. Nah, hated that I shit. I liked him. Um, mm. The only person that I could really think of that I th that that like, I think would maybe make a good Batman is the dude from The Boys who played fucking uh, fake Captain America. No. Oh yeah, what's his name? It'd be interesting. Uh, it's a weird name. Um, I can't um, think of it right now. He was talking about. He's really super excited. Fans Jensen were starting Eccles. to speculate on that. No, not. Oh, I thought no. No, I'm talking about. Jensen oh, you're talking Eccles, about Jensen yeah. Eccles. Well, Jensen Eccles has played Batman before. Voice, but I think physically. Yeah, I thought you were. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the other guy. No, no, yeah. no. Physically, I, I, I could kind of see it. He's the only person in my mind that yeah. like. But I have such a hard time like. 
I don't know. It's hard to. It's hard to. Yeah, Jensen do. could totally pull it off. I think he's he'd been be, a detective his whole life. He was in Supernatural for fifteen fucking seasons. Yeah, <laughs> but he looks the part to me somehow. I don't know. He's like handsome. You could see him as like a playboy, uh, but you could see maybe there's like a darkness there. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. All right. Just well, speaking of Batman, fucking... Warner Brothers Japan. Announced on Thursday that it had officially begun production on Batman and Ninja versus Yakuza League, the Batman sequel to the what? 2018's Batman Ninja versus Yakuza League. Okay. This is the sequel to the 2018's original anime film Batman Ninja, mm. um, which I actually haven't watched. This is one Batman animation movie that I've never seen. Apparently, uh, Gorilla Grodd's Quake Engine Time Displacement Machine sent Batman as well as foes and allies into feudal Japan. Naturally. And that's the premise of the story. Um, apparently pretty highly rated. Same crew is all returning. Well, we won't know much about it, but uh, they're sh- going to show it or talk about it more at the Anime Expo in July in Los Angeles. So maybe we'll know some more. Maybe I'll watch the first one and then talk about the second one. We'll see. Okay. But yeah, feudal Japan Batman. You know, it's a little one-off. That's crazy, yeah. WB, they're gonna they're gonna milk Batman, Dan. I hope you're ready for yeah. all the Batman. We're let's do it's like Sony's milk and Spider Man. They already have milked it. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna keep. Let's send doing Batman it. back to the fucking uh, 1800s. Send him to space. <laughs> let's just do everything. Yeah, yeah. Send him under the free ocean. Some slaves, that would be good. <laughs> Batman frees the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's just fighting fucking, <laughs> fucking plantation owners and shit. Or well, like actually, that, uh, he's Abe, rich. Abe Lincoln Chick. Vampire Hunter. Great yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. Great yeah. movie. I haven't seen that. I always heard That's it was funny, funny, though. Bruce Wayne has to fight one of his ancestors who is a plantation owner. Ooh, fuck. Yeah. Mm. That's rough. <laughs> well, actually, that wouldn't be true. His The money is not old money. His dad made the money. Mm. He's good. He's he's free and clear. He's got he he's his his family history is not tainted. Yeah. All right. What else we got? Nicholas Galitzine. G- G- Galitzine. Uh, whatever his name is. Sorry. To play He Man. Get your in the shit. Live together, action Masters of the Universe movie. Oh yeah, saw this. He looks cool. He looks this the is part from the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. He uh, fucking looks. Trav- He's not he, even blonde, ahead. bro. No, but but come on, Marvin, there's bleach Wait for that shit. He looks like Dolph uh, Lundgren a little bit. Interesting. Mm. No, he uh, Travis Knight is directing this. He this will be his um, junior directorial movie, and uh, he did Kubo and the Two Strings as well as the Bumblebee movie, the standalone Transformers movie for Bumblebee. Mm-hmm. Uh, written by Chris Bub- Butler, Robbie Brenner's producing for Mattel Films with Todd Black, Jason Blumenthal, and Steve Tisch producing for Escape Artist. Coming out June 5th, 2026. So we're finally getting a live action He Man. It's been a long time since we've had a oh, live a, action He Man. It's coming to theaters? Yes, June 5th, 2026. Yeah, wow. everybody's really going back to theatrical. The only thing we don't know about is yeah. Badlands because Prey. Uh, you know, they Prey was a straight to Hulu, and some of those Predator movies may come straight to the Hulu, but if they think they're good enough, they might throw them into theaters. That's the only one right. we don't know about. And pretty much everybody else is just going back to theaters. Hmm. Okay. Um, and just a couple more things here. Um, in contrast to Alex Proya's defiance of the Crow reboot, not oh. happy about it. <laughs> Chad uh, Stahelski gave his thoughts on Bill Skarsgård taking on the lead role f- to Esquire. He said, when I heard Bill was doing it, I was like, that's a good take. I know Bill was going to bring something different. Bill's got that ethereal nature that makes him feel out of this world or from another planet or existence. I hate to break it to you, but this movie's yeah, going to suck my like ass. like a fucking alien, that's why. Why? Yeah, he does look like an alien. <laughs> why what? Why is this movie going to suck ass? Yeah. Uh, it just has all the trappings of a movie that's going to suck ass. I could just tell already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you may ask why he August. fucking has a say in it, uh, as opposed to the director of the the first Crow. Well, he was uh, Jason Lee's stunt double in mm-hmm. the original movie. Yeah. He also, you yeah. know, John Wick director. That's that guy. Um, but yeah, he was also talking about the uh, rigorous the rigorousness of stunts back in the day, which was pretty interesting. 
He's like face replacement wasn't a big thing yet with CGI or anything. So you had to watch like footage for weeks and weeks and weeks and study and mimic the actor and then do it perfectly to get the shot or ruin it. One of my favorite things of old movies is when you could like spot the the double. Like the the, yes. And like there's one that really sticks out in my head, which is in Terminator 2, where he jumps into the fucking LA River or whatever. Not the is it in LA? Yeah, the the fucking Yeah, yeah. LA River, yes. The concrete. Yes, river. Yes, the CLR. Yeah, and he jumps in with the fucking the motorcycle, and it's like a slow motion yeah. shot, but you could like clearly see it's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. And I've just always had yeah. that. Like I've always remembered that in my head. Yeah, that shit never gets old. Nah, that's good. And we don't even really we never uh, uh, recognize stuntmen until just like the last year. Like is that when they started doing it? I gotta and say, they had to work a lot more back in the day. I gotta <laughs> say, I really liked uh, the one that. The uh, the one that just came out with um, what's his name? Uh, monkey head. Yeah, monkey head. No, not monkey. <laughs> <laughs> monkey. Head. I, I thought you were talking about the Dev Patel action movie. That was Monkey Man, but I'm talking about monkey the Man. one that was about. <laughs> well, he's wearing the mask. The actual stunt man, the stunt, uh, the, the oh, fall, the fall guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fall Colt, guy. Colt it, Seavers. It was actually really good, and like it did a really good yeah. job paying That's homage to stunt people. And at the end, there's like that like montage of like give credit to the stunt guys. They just never get credit. Yeah. It was yeah, a good absolutely. movie. It was a good movie. Yeah, it is a good movie. All yeah. right. What else we got? Well, the last piece of news we got here. Richard Brake. Famous, famous villain. Oh wow, you got lots a, of movies. You dug deep for this transition, didn't you? Uh no. He has just been yes. announced along with a bunch of famous actors to have been cast in Phil. Battenberger's latest period piece drama, and it actually might be a terrible movie. Um, Phil Brattenberger did Condor's Nest, which was a Nazi time piece movie, and it was like a 4.3 on IMDb. And then he did Point Man, which is a Vietnam time period movie, and it was like a 3.9 on IMDb. So now he's making Laws of Man, which is about the dawn of the Cold War period piece movie, but he's got Richard Brake as well as um, Harvey Keitel, uh, Keith Carradine, Dermot Mulroney, Graham Greene, who was a native guy. He was in Green Mile, Dances with Wolves, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Forey Smith, our boy Lloyd from Yellowstone. Like a whole bunch of big-name actors in this guy's movie. He was put out two shit fucking movie, time period <laughs> movies. But we're going to get this Dawn of War or Dawn of the Cold War movie about, it's about, uh, what is it? Uh, two U.S. Marshals on a dangerous mission to arrest Benjamin Bonney, a victim, and they under, d- uncover a bigger plot that's hmm. Cold War related. It's funny yeah. you mentioned Dermot Mulroney because I was just at, before we got on this call, I was editing the Scream 6 review. <laughs> yeah. And Marvin and I were, I basically say in the video, I was like, this guy's the worst actor alive. <laughs> 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 and we were just shitting on him. Oh, man. Poor guy. Mm. But yeah, Richard Brake, he's been cast in that movie as well as... Okay. I'm going to spoil it for you, boys. Don't know if you've seen it or not. He is the main villain in the next season of Mayor of Kingstown. I saw that. It yeah. is him. <clears throat> so oh, wow. he's So uh, he's getting some more villain roles. <laughs> and speaking That's of cool. them... I saw there's two to talk villains. about one of them. I thought this guy was fucking Rorschach. <laughs> no, different, <At> first. <laughs> different actor. That's Jackie Earl Haley. He's got that Rorschach fucking face. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for the news, yeah. Dusty. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I started the show talking about it. We talk a lot about how critics are full of shit, but there ain't no way that there isn't some conspiracy shit going on because this thing is 97% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, okay? Mm-hmm. Hell no. All right. Check the audience score. That's the, what we say. It's high, dude. The audience score isn't that high. Uh, it's high enough. This is it's the only last. 71%. That, that's good, though. It's <laughs> fresh. It's 6.9 on IMDb. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. this shit is getting good reviews. And I didn't even hear about this movie until Dusty mentioned it a couple weeks ago. And this is the last stop in Yuma County. I don't know if this movie was purposefully meant to be a grindhouse B movie. Yes. Or if it's just so bad that it's like unironically that. I I'm not honestly sure, but we'll get into it. 
Um, so <laughs> this is a story of I, there's a it's a group. Uh, there's not one real main character. I guess if there was a main character, I guess you could say it's the the knife salesman played by Jim mm-hmm. Cummings, who um, the movie opens with him. He's on a road trip selling fucking cutlery, and he runs out of gas. The gas station attendant says. You, the, the gas truck's late. Go hang out in the diner. And yeah, as he well, it's does, more of a story about a place and all the people that yeah. just happen to be involved um, with it. And and so there's a diner and a gas station, and that's about it. And everybody shows up and starts hanging out at this diner, waiting for the gas truck to show up. Uh, two of who are uh, bank robbers. The movie opens with a radio broadcast of talking about a bank robbery not too far away. And they kind of are in this diner and they hold everybody up and tensions mount and yada, yada, yada. You've seen this movie before. That's, that's the thing. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I honestly, I didn't even know what to think about this movie. I I didn't watch a trailer for it. I didn't really know what it was about going into it. I didn't even read the description for it. I don't even think you really talked about it that much. You were just like, oh yeah, I watched this movie and it was like, yeah, crime thriller. I think is what crime uh, thriller is pretty good. Suspense thriller. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know. This is like, to me, uh, a film student's submission by someone who watched, you know, too many Quentin Tarantino and Coen Brothers movies. Um, Like, uh, but I I don't know. I want to hear what you guys think about it because I'm actually confused. I don't really know. What do you think? (laughs) What do you think, Marvin? Um, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was bad. I didn't think it was that good I, like we've seen it before but i mean this this plot for me is is always enjoyable like the fucking diner in the middle of nowhere where some shit goes down i mean it's a pretty enjoyable thing yeah um i i don't know how it's got as high as rating as it does from the critics for sure <laughs> yeah, it's telling um, something's going on but i don't think it was bad i really don't because I've seen it before and because it is such a simple, I don't have like a lot of um, things to say. It's, it's it's not that deep or anything, honestly. Yeah. Like it was just kind of like a good watch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all, all right. I got really. Did you watch mm-hmm. it multiple times, Dusty? Or did you watch it just the once? Yeah, I watched it a second time because the first time I watched it was a couple weeks ago. And what do you think? Yeah. Uh, did I need to watch it a second time? Nah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe just to see if I miss anything, which I don't think I really did. Cause, uh, it, the pacing is very slow. Yeah. Um, you're just kind of growing True. through the paces and it is a grind, but it, it's like a thoughtful, um, Murphy's violent Murphy's law, I think tale. And that's really all it <laughs> serves to, to tell the audience is yeah. You know, best laid plans, shit goes wrong. Shit can go really wrong. Uh, you know, where yeah. the spoiler, like they're all waiting on the gas truck. And at the end, you find out the gas truck wrecked and is lying on the side of the fucking road a few miles yeah. down. Well, you yeah. see that well, in the beginning of the movie. That early. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess I, I'm in the then getting back to and discovering it, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. But yeah, no, I don't know. I thought it was well acted. I thought uh, they all, they all play their parts just fine. <laughs> and there were some hilarious scenes and. Some, I, uh, I don't think I enjoyed it, but I'm not sure. And I don't think I've ever felt this way in a while about a movie where I'm like, I really don't know if I liked it or not. <laughs> um, Because on one hand, it's a very, like, it, it, it's literally like a dollar store Quentin Tarantino movie. Like, it that that's yeah. that's what it feels like. That's my first. Yeah, I mean, like the Mexican standoff scene was hilarious, and then just like bang, oh shit! Uh, what was funny about it though? I, I'm curious. Just like saw everybody people... pulls a gun, he's like, "What the fuck? Everybody's got a fucking gun around <laughs> here!" Like, yeah, no shit, motherfucker, you're out in right. the middle of nowhere in yeah. this time period. I just thought that was hilarious. What time period was it? Did they even specify? Uh. Th- th- I was it modern so, day? You'd have to look at the models of the cars to really say, but it, it was, seems it, like it, it takes is, place in like the seventies, eighties around that yes. time. Yeah, yeah, because you had little square metal gas cans and small, you know, cars, older I mean, cars, yeah, a traveling salesman. Yeah, I ain't yeah. never seen that shit. <laughs> yeah, pull the uh, license yeah. plate down. It was on a spring hinge back yeah. in the day. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know, man. I just. 
I don't know if I liked it because, as I said, on one hand, it's it's very derivative of Tarantino specifically, Coen Brothers stuff in there, which isn't on its own a bad thing, right? Um, you know, what is what's that? What's the phrase? Uh, something is the best form of flattery, highest form of flattery. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know what you mean. That's yeah. fine, and those are some of the like yeah. Tarantino, hate him or love him, one of the best filmmakers alive. And the Coen brothers might be the best filmmakers alive. It's arguable, I would say. And like, so that's fine. I'm, so that's not a bad thing. But judging it as that, as like a, as like a, I, you know, I called it a dollar store Tarantino movie. If you're judging it based on that, I don't think it's very good because it's like trying to be that. And it, and it doesn't have anything of its own. Like, and I think that's what stands out the most to me about this movie is like there's really nothing in it that's like super unique. Whereas I could just watch other movies like this that are better, right? Um, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, because like, because really, like, so so we'll talk about the plot a little bit. Like, it's just it snowballs as Dusty said. It's a slow burn. Knife salesman shows up to the diner. We're introduced to the to the waitress who owns the diner and. We hear a little bit about her. She's married to the sheriff, but they can't have a baby. And, you know, God hasn't blessed them with a baby. And, you know, uh, the air conditioner doesn't work. And it's like you get exposition, but the exposition is actually meaningless into the grand scheme of the movie. <laughs> I felt because like and then and then more patrons start coming in. Then you get the old couple who come in and then you well, first you get the fucking you get the the bank robbers who stop in and they run out of gas and they're there and they're fucking like just being bad for no reason. I kind of felt like, <laughs> cause like really, uh, all right. So like, it's all over the radio. They robbed the bank. They would have gotten noticed already. Okay. So tensions are heightened. The old couple then comes in and they're fucking sitting there. And then the fucking wannabe criminal couple, the younger couple, they show yeah. up and then the fucking native American guy shows up and it's like, and then you got the gas station attendant next door who's like, he's a little suspicious of what's going on. So, but like, there's like, the only exposition that you get is really about her. And then spoilers, after the Mexican standoff, like, she dies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And funny enough, I was just, I just uploaded, <laughs> scheduled the video that we did, we talked about, uh, Infinity Pool and Dusty's one of Dusty's main complaints is like nobody in this movie is likable. And that's the same thing in this. There's not a single likable person in this movie except for her. And she fucking dies. And the other thing that really pissed me the fuck yeah. off is that the movie starts with basically her saying, not starts, it's just early in the movie. It's her saying like, they're talking about kids, like, oh, yeah, no, God didn't bless us with the ability to have kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, the movie ends with a fucking orphaned baby. Mm -hmm. Right. And neither of the two couple who are the only two likable people in the movie that should have gotten the baby, they both die. <laughs> her and her husband. Yep. Yeah. So this movie was just like a snowball of tragedy that yeah. made no fucking sense. Sometimes life doesn't make sense. No, I get that. And I get that's like might be like one of the things of like this is just like a whirlwind of like bad things happening. But I a lot yeah. a lot of it just doesn't make any fucking sense. And then there's like I mean, then what you movies would you compare this to? <sighs> there's no direct comparison. I mean, well, there is a Humphrey like, Bogart movie from like back in the 40s that this is like almost a remake of. Uh called The, the River uh, Wild would be one I think would be comparable. Kevin Bacon and Meryl Streep where the bank robbers try to sneak down river. So they hire a river, like I remember that a river expert to take them down river. And then they discover that they're the bank robbers and chaos ensues, but it's about a small family trying to get out. Not everybody that shows up trying to get gas or like the town. I mean, there are all kinds of robbery movies where things go wrong for the robbers and they end up dead, you know, but usually it's like the cops win. It's, this is one where like, Everybody just gets fucked, and it's like, oh, okay, well, holy uh, shit, <laughs> not yeah, good for anybody. I just, right. I don't know. I, I kind of just didn't. I don't know. I found it in poor taste, to be honest. Like at the end, like I, it was, interesting. It, it, there was like no real reason for it. Like why? 
I don't know. It just felt weird. It, it, it bothered me a little bit, actually, to be honest. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or whatever, but like, <laughs> I, 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 I feel like I catch myself saying this a lot. Like, things need to have a fucking point to them and to serve the plot. And this, this didn't even have that. This didn't even have a story. It didn't have anything. It was, it was just a plot. It wasn't a story. It was just a plot. It was like, here's a bunch of people in a diner. And no, then it's just the knife salesman reacting to everything that happened and then everything that he did. Like, what would you do, you know? I wouldn't You're do what he there. did. <laughs> I certainly You're wouldn't do You're sitting there and everybody's dead. Right. You're sitting there and everybody's dead and now you're trying to get away and you're like, I could get away with the money scot-free and then people show up. Like, what do you do? No, I get, yeah. I get what it was trying to do, which is why I'm so confused. Because, again, if you... There's, there's two ways to view it. This is either a, like, unironic... Like, we're trying to make a fucking Tarantino-esque movie that was just bad and low budget. Or... <laughs> This guy could be like, no, I was totally trying to make a B movie, like, and that's what it is, because the acting is bad, the budget's low, like it that it's a B movie, and Maybe. you and like you know the font and like the title and all that stuff is done in the B movie way, so you could easily see it as that. So I'm just very I'm left very confused. Like the direction is decent enough. Um, I thought the acting, particularly this Jim Cummings guy who plays the knife salesman, was fucking awful with his like permanently bewildered fucking vacant stare <laughs> just confused all the time and like he just had like a super flat delivery um i thought his acting was i thought it was good i feel i thought he had a good performance <laughs> maybe well, not when he was like blankly staring in that but like the the second half where shit started to pop off i felt like it was pretty good yeah i thought the acting was pretty good overall in the movie i think uh some of the dialogue could have had you know have something to be desired but yeah i don't know i just i think this was one of those movies where i'm just like i don't see what you guys see i will like i mean i don't really see much i mean like i said it was just yeah yeah no i'm not looking for a deeper meaning in this movie really i'm just enjoying it no for sure portraying you know as it's playing out yeah but even in that sense like i don't know really that anything that enjoyable really played out Cause like I didn't find them like okay so totally on board what you're saying like not everything has to have like you know a deeper meaning or a fucking crazy like plot threads or whatever things could just be but like sure yeah okay so then what is the movie trying to do this particular movie in my mind is trying to like build tension over the course of ninety minutes I didn't feel all that tense and like I. Uh, I, I I didn't I didn't think a Mexican standoff was gonna happen, but obviously you've seen movies like this before. You know some shit's gonna go down. Yeah. So like I didn't really find it all that tense. And then after all the shit happens, you know the knife salesman just fucking like loses his mind and like <laughs> just fucking that that's really well, he's already in too deep. He couldn't like it was I either guess. keep going or like try to explain why you were trying to get away with the money. <laughs> See, but I'm so surprised at you because you have gripes about stuff like this, but this you're giving a pass because when that other couple shows up at the end and he's like trying to make his getaway and he's like fucking caught red handed, instead of skulking and hiding, he could easily just come out and be like, holy fuck, I survived this fucking massacre. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, it, and just but, it would have been I, over. Yeah, like, you're, but the panic in his mind at that uh, point, like, I get it. everybody in the diner just fucking died, and then you stabbed a lady. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it's I, mean, like, I don't think he was supposed, to, I don't think he was being portrayed as someone that's like smart. I think like, it was I don't less. Think that was ever the goal of he was a no, loose character. It also, I mean, he's yeah. a fucking knife salesman. Like, he's not like a skilled <laughs> smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, the and, cut code, and, but that and that's that's the premise too. Is that like he he succumbed to the greed because obviously he has a shitty job or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. on the road trying to make he's money human. to get back home to see his yeah. birthday. I would, yeah, I would have I would have I would have put the money in my truck in my car, and then I would have just called the cops, and that's it. Great example. <laughs> Dusty asked, "What would you compare this to?" There was a whole episode like this in Sandman. That diner yeah. episode, the diners, yeah, mm -hmm. which was a million times better than this fucking movie, in yeah, terms of like that's... tension and stuff like that. It's different, yeah. it's but way it does, different. but it does the same thing. Yeah. You have a bunch of characters, and this is in an hour of television, so you have a bunch of characters yeah. trapped in a place, and you learn a little bit about each of them. So that's by the true. time when the massacre happens, you actually feel bad for the chick who was like estranged from her 
dad or mother or whoever i I don't remember off the top of my head but like right yeah you do like you could do this and still like do some development to where you give a fuck like i only felt bad about the waitress because she didn't do anything (laughs) you know what i mean right yeah nobody else i gave a fuck about i mean i guess the couple but like they basically they're silent most of the time so like i feel i personally feel like for to to build up something like this with tension and stuff there has to be a payoff that is emotionally striking in some way otherwise the build up is meaningless it's like it's like jerking off and not finishing do you know what i mean <laughs> you're not get you, you you know what i mean there's not like there's no finality to it it's just it just happens yeah and it's not yeah. satisfying the ultimate atheist philosophy at the end it's just nothing well, none of it matters yeah uh, well that's vastly different than watching a 90 minute movie i mean come on yeah but i mean i don't know i'm having trouble with it that's i fair. just i don't yeah. know if i like, like i said i watched it a second time and realized i probably didn't need to i could have watched this one time and enjoyed it for what it was and never think about it or watch it again it's mm-hmm. not like that's all right uh, but i still thought it was a good movie i like i enjoyed it yeah i see, would recommend you watch it if you don't have anything to do and you want like what do I want? Yeah, it's I'm I I think it's worth a watch. I think visually it was good. There's some good directing, good cinematography. I think the set was really well done. Yeah. I I like I like the mm-hmm. setting. I don't think I enjoyed it though. And I think just <laughs> it's weird that I I can't fucking get a grip on it. But I I don't think I actually enjoyed it. I really don't. I don't think I did. I think there's too much of it that I didn't like. I thought the acting was really bad. I did like I, <laughs> the dialogue in the beginning between her and him was like Resident Evil One with like <laughs> Barry, where there's like long pauses between like <laughs> responses, and and then it's like, yeah. I'll be fine. I've got this, and it's like, uh, d- yeah. Uh, so maybe so, it was supposed to be a B movie. Then. But that's what I'm saying. I you could easily say that though, right? If you're a director and you make a dog shit movie. And no, people oh, criticize it. Oh, yeah, no, I did it intentionally. And we've talked about it before. Like, but oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it's, hard, it's hard for me because I don't know what the objective of the movie was. I guess based off of certain visual elements of this, I have to say it was done purposefully. There's a lot of aesthetics that are like yeah. grindhouse B-movie aesthetics that like. Yeah. I mean, the budget was a million bucks. Yeah. Did he go in and say like, yo, be cheesy, like act campy? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if he did, but even if he, even if it was, this is why I am pretty sure I didn't enjoy it is because even if it was intentionally a B movie, I still don't think it did a lot of things. Well, another movie that's intentionally B movie. I talked about it recently with a friend of mine, Eli Roth's movie, Cabin Fever. Have either of you ever seen that? Yeah. Is that from like early years 2000s. ago? Yeah. Yeah. yeah early, I've seen that. I've seen with that. The, they get the fucking like flesh eating virus with that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's not a good movie, but it is intentionally not good. Yeah. Because it is copying those campy, low-budget B-horror movies of the 70s and 60s. But I enjoy that movie. That movie has a lot of fucking tension. It's fucking disgusting. It freaked me the fuck out for years. Like, I was afraid to drink tap water for a while after watching that. Not afraid, but, like, I thought about that movie every time. Right. This didn't really do any of those things to me. Like... I kind of, I watched it, it's over, it's done with, I wasn't really left feeling anything about it. Yeah. So that's, I think, where my issue is. Other than the fact that I I think the ending, I want to talk about the ending, because I'm curious what you, like, I really found that in poor taste. I don't know about you guys, if you guys even thought about it more than once or twice, but like, the fact that, okay, he accidentally gets, he gets into a scuffle, accidentally kills this woman. Yep. Then he gets attacked by her husband and in self-defense beats the shit out of him with a fucking with a fucking tire iron. Yep. Kills him. Mm-hmm. And then as he's about to flee the scene, he hears a baby crying in the car, realizing that they had a baby. Yeah. And then he leaves the baby behind. <sighs> yep. It just seemed overly like cruel to me. <laughs> He was. I mean, he was committed at that point. If that makes sense. Well, he was committed and scared. Like, he was already in too deep, and he didn't also want to be... He he became the villain 
he couldn't also be the hero, so he just fled as the villain. Yeah, I guess. Because he knew the cops would be along soon enough. Yeah. I just, I just, uh, I just have this overwhelming feeling of like, this is just the type of movie like a movie buff writes after they watch like a couple of indie films that are better than this. I, I, just, I don't know. It's, I, it's one that I'm really confused about. I just, I, uh, and I don't, I just don't understand why it's getting such high praise. Like, it's, uh, yeah, that's a little weird to me. Like, if you guys say, like, oh, like Marvin, I totally get where you're coming from. You're like, yeah, no, it wasn't that great but i enjoyed it like it is what it is it's just like a shootout happened and like yeah kind of cool dusty's kind of saying the same thing like yeah it is what it is there's motherfuckers out here like this is peak cinema nah last stop in yuma county reminds us how gripping neo-noir thrillers can be when properly crafted in addition to obtaining outstanding performances from all his actors the director demonstrates that he has extensive knowledge of the cinematography cinematographic language and uses it to immerse us in its simple but ingenuous story ingenious story wow i can't even read <laughs> um i don't know i i don't know it's just one of those movies I, I don't know i really don't i don't know i just i know that i didn't care for it that much that's all i know but i guess that's fair yeah um like this is an indie movie, by the way. So. Oh, I know it is. No, I know. Okay. No, I know it is. I know it is. I know. And it had some, like, interesting elements to it, like, but I just felt like they didn't go anywhere. Like, and I guess, you know, I, I, I kind of get where Marvin's coming from. Like, they don't, they where do they have to go? They don't really, but, like, you need some, some structure, man. Like, you got to have some things to, like, hook an audience with like and i'm not 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 to like say you guys like are fucking wrong or anything but it's just not enough for me to just be like huh okay there's a shootout nice like i <laughs> i just I, I don't i don't know that's kind of i felt just nothing afterwards um except for the thing with the parents i think just shooting new parents fucking with a baby in the car is like i don't think that has any value really to be honest, other than to create just awfulness for the sake of it. That's really what that <laughs> felt like to me. It's like, I need to just like, that's the only sense that I got. He constantly escalates the, the violence, I guess, or, or whatever you want to call it. And that's like the culmination of it where it's like, wow, how bad, how much worse can you get? Like you killed new parents yeah. and then you leave the baby behind. That's just, it just felt very like arbitrary to me. Because right. you don't even need that scene. Why do you need that scene? You could have skipped that and then got to the sheriff tracking him down and all that stuff. Like, he could have just left the diner and we get to that scene with the sheriff earlier. Like, a whole fucking 15 minutes earlier. Right. So, yeah, I'm not sure what... And that's, and that's really kind of, I guess, the ultimate takeaway is, like, just pointless would be the best description of everything I saw. I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. Um... But, I mean, this is, again, one of those movies, like, critics adore it somehow. Yeah. There's also the ineptness of the the young aspiring cop who wants nothing to impress his boss but doesn't really pay enough attention to do his own fucking job to save everybody's fucking lives. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I felt bad for the sheriff when after all that shit happened because I was like, yeah, that rookie fucked everything up, man. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. What um, do you guys think he wrote on that napkin? The, I don't know. Uh, Funny oh, enough, I saw somebody our, our else in guy. the reviews being like, I want to know what he wrote on the napkin. You think but it was I, to his daughter? Maybe. Maybe goodbyes. Probably, yeah. Goodbyes maybe, to his daughter. Maybe something like that. Mm-hmm. I would get. I bet. It, that wouldn't make any sense, really, though. It wouldn't like make any sense because if he cared about his daughter, it would, he wouldn't make the heel turn. He'd be like, oh, fuck, I survived. Wow, I should be lucky that I left the situation with my life. Let me run yeah. home to my daughter. Not like, yeah. let me kill a fucking young couple with a baby in the car. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what do you, yeah, I mean, I guess at that point it's different, but like after he stabs the girl because they get in an altercation, like you're sitting there, I there's totally, no phone. 
No, no. There's no phone. Totally. You got to just sit there and wait for the next person to show up and try and explain wow. that you didn't kill all these people. You just happened to be the only one that survived and not sound <laughs> like the guy who's going straight to jail for killing everybody. I'm going to pull yeah. a Dusty here because there's a lot of goalpost moving in this movie, right? <laughs> that explains away logic, okay? So let's go down. Let's go on a little journey real quick. <laughs> He knows that her husband is the sheriff. She says it. Yeah. Okay. He also knows that the phone line was cut. Mm -hmm. He knows that the deputy fumbled the fucking nonsense or whatever. He knows he should that... be aware of these things. Yes. Let me finish. He knows that the sheriff will be coming eventually. Let's just that let that is definite. Number A, uh, definite letter A. B, he stabs this bitch, right? Totally understandable, like, wow, I'm freaking out. I stabbed somebody. I could be put a... Thousands of things running through your brain. I was just in the middle of a shootout. I'm the only survivor. I could be blamed for this. Totally, totally, totally fine. His knife. He stabbed her with his knife. Wow, that looks bad. Yep. But... And left it. Looked at it and left it. Sheriff but, saw that right away. But there's got to be... Any human being in this situation outside of the movies would for sure just be like, well, I'm just going to sit here and wait for the sheriff to come. I know he's going to come eventually. I should be able to explain this pretty easily. Like, everybody knows the bank robber's in their car. The money's in the car. I could easily explain this. It's an easily explainable situation is basically what I'm getting at. And I he mean, knows, I could give you a great... And he knows the sheriff's coming. Hang on. And the goalpost moving is though that the movie sets up is like, well, the sheriff was very, he was very, like, emotional that his wife died, and he didn't believe him to begin with. Well, yeah, he didn't believe him when he was fucking hightailing it down the fucking highway. Yeah. Away from the scene. the baby. <laughs> if the sheriff showed up and this guy was just sitting in the fucking booth, freaked the fuck out, I'm sure the sheriff would have been like, oh, okay, wasn't you. What were you going to say, Dusty? I'm sorry. True. I, I mean, my one gripe of this movie would have made the movie not even happen, right? So they pull up to the gas station and they realize there's no gas and the dude, they, like there's hotel rooms in there and they go into the diner and there's no AC working in the diner. Like there's window units on the hotel, mm -hmm. spend $5, park the car in the back and stay in a hotel room until the grass truck shows up. Like you don't need to go in the <laughs> diner, the diner. Yeah. and fucking stir all that shit up. Like what, do, why are you parking your car out front? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like no, just get a room normally in the back. Normally those things don't bother me, but there's just a lot of like logical leaps that I have to make to go through the yeah. plot of this. And it's like, it's just too many. It's just way too many. Mm -hmm. And, and it's too many that like, again, the it, had the movie done a little bit more, I would have been on board, but like, it's just, it, it just didn't, I don't know. I really don't know what to say many more about it. So I was like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't fucking hate it. I didn't hate it. It's just, I didn't like it really. It's just, it's hard to. Hard I mean, it's to really supposed say. to be that kind of movie, that kind of movie that makes you feel icky. And like, eh, well. I don't feel icky. I just don't. Mm. I just feel nothing yeah, right. about it. It's just it, like I just feel nothing. That's the best way to describe it. I feel nothing. I, I the what I'm talking about with the couple at the end is not a feeling. I just think it was pointless. It's like the fucking yeah. scene in Infinity Pool where you see him jizz on the rocks, like pointless it serves no purpose it's just like it's just there to be awful for no reason right i don't really care to watch that so you know whatever i'm not offended by it it's just i just think it was stupid and this guy's got a fucking evil dead movie apparently he's he's signed on for an evil dead movie this director francis yeah. jalupi gallopy i don't know how you pronounce his name this is his directorial debut here so oh yep okay i don't know maybe we give him a pass i i just i'm just really caught in this like middle of like well clearly inspired by tarantino clearly not tarantino <laughs> uh i'm purposefully made a b movie i don't i don't i don't really know it's just one of those movies i, mean, I, I get that like, i think yeah what you you watch a tarantino film with uh the one with the no, no, no. The one with the diner scene. Um, Reservoir Wallet. Dogs? 
No, Jesus Christ. Pulp Fiction. Oh, Pulp, Pulp Fiction. Fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulp Fiction actually has the diner scene. So it's like yeah. he, somebody watched Pulp Fiction and say, you know what? Let's just set that back in the 70s and make it a little bit longer uh-huh. and a right. little bit crazier. Like, I can see why you would complain about something like, or maybe, like you said, um, or an homage, you know. But it has the other elements of Pulp Fiction, too. You, it just, you just said. So basically, he took the diner scene, made a whole movie out of it, right? You got the Mexican right. standoff, which also happens in Reservoir Dogs. You've got mm-hmm. fucking <laughs> Hateful Eight, basically, because that whole movie takes place in one closed-in area. Well, maybe it's an ode to Tarantino. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So, but it's like, yeah, you can't, right. I don't know if you could have both. That's why I'm confused. It's like either you have an ode to Tarantino that's like derivative and not great. Good job. Nice try. Or you have like, no, I'm, I'm doing this thing that's like clearly inspired by Tarantino, but I'm also making it bad on purpose because I like B movies and I want to celebrate B movies. <laughs> but I don't know if that's what it did. I don't know. I just don't know. I just know that I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, but I do know critics adore it as usual because they love movies <laughs> like this. Uh, filmmaker's going to pat himself on the back, and uh, I'm left here wondering why. So, yep, um, it's got a six point nine on IMDb. Uh, what would you guys give it? It's right there. It's a seven. Yeah. Really, you're going to go that high with it? Yeah, I, I, don't I think wouldn't that's say high. it's point like one. I give it a six and a half. But yeah, six and a half. Seven, seven for me is, right is like right above mid, really. Okay. Yeah. So you're giving it a seven, Marvin. What about you, Dusty? Six and a half. Uh, I gotta go with like a five. This is just that <laughs> middle of the road for me. Middle yeah. of the road. All right. I respect it. Um, what, was this like straight to fucking streaming? Uh, no, it wasn't out for very long though. This was actually in uh, theaters. Uh, box office opening weekend, 41,000, May 12th, gross U.S. and Canada, 94,000. So it was like a, it had some sort of premiere weekend and then went straight to digital, probably. Nice. It was like a one week run hmm. and a couple of, you know, because you have to, you know, you got to shop this. You, not every theater is going to want to pay for your movie. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. There you have it, folks. Last stop in Yuma County. If you watched it, let us know what you thought. Um, yeah. Maybe you have some sort of better uh, better way to explain what you thought about it than I did. I don't know why I'm so, like, fucking stun-locked on this movie. I mean, it's just, like I said, it doesn't have much. There's not much substance there. Um, I think that's what is it why is. why I didn't really have much to say about it. Like, there's not really much there, so... But to me, that doesn't make it bad. So no, I it's just not. Well, the other thing too is I also forgot to point out. What, like I, I lean towards the fact that it's purposefully bad in some aspects and cheesy, because I don't know if you noticed, but his fucking hair dye, that brown hair dye, looks like it was fucking spray painted on his fucking <laughs> head with like Party City <laughs> Halloween hairspray. <laughs> That's funny. So that has to be done on purpose, right? Yeah, they were using that. That's what they're using back in the day for like balding spots and stuff. They're using spray paint. They had they had the spray cans and shit. Did you notice that about his hair? I didn't. That's funny though. A little bit. Go back and watch some scenes where you could see it's like <laughs> it's shockingly brown. It's like it's like reddish brown. Like it, you could see it was spray dyed. Here, here's yeah. a great here's a great picture of it right here. I'm gonna put it in in the chat real quick. All right. Like, you could tell that it's not his natural color. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So I see stuff like that, and I'm like, okay, there's no way the movie's this fucking bad, like, in real life. It's got to be, like, an ironic thing. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. You guys have anything else to say about it, or what? Nope. No? All right. Well, there's our thoughts, folks. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of Last Stop in Yuma County. Um, If you have not done so already and this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us out. We're very close to 700. We're working up our way to our next little goal there. Um, So that would be helpful. Leave a like on the video. Do all those things that you're trained on the internet to do. We would really appreciate it. Um, We're here every week for the most part. We'll be back next week. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you then.
See you. Master. <laughs>